Hello. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. How are you? After one another meeting, the Silk Road Tourism Forum, I'm very happy to be here. My name is Erdogan. I am the Dean of Faculty at Team University. I have the honor to moderate today's session. We are going to be discussing the, the famous gap between industry and academia. And, you know, uh, we are here with the representatives of hotel, travel, and tour operators uh, and representatives of the university. So I will be wearing two caps. Uh, as a moderator and as someone who is uh, administrating an academic faculty. Very briefly, I would like to start with introducing from my point of view, uh, what are the strengths and weaknesses of uh, tourism industry in Uzbekistan. Then we are going to discuss now and the future of hospitality and tourism industry in Uzbekistan. The reason we have uh, industry and academia uh, represented here is there is a famous gap between teaching made applicable, what they need, we don't uh, involve them, etc. So in order to eliminate this, we have the representatives of both industry and academia here on this uh, distinguished panel. What, after my brief introductions, I will uh, invite the speakers one by one to introduce themselves very briefly. And um, the first question after that will be what they think about then and now tourism industry in Uzbekistan. We will follow that with uh, what they are thinking the future look like. What are the needs of the industry? What educators should do? And educators need from industry so that we can teach better. So the whole idea is um, the panel is going to discuss, but uh, at the end, I would like to kindly invite you to share your questions, your, your comments. Uh, what do you think? Because you are also uh, representing both sides in this room. So your thoughts are valuable for us as well. So without further ado, I would like to uh, very briefly introduce um, what I think uh, the strengths of Uzbekistan. Uh, to Jason and uh, previous speakers, they talk about uh, adventure tourism. I it's a very exciting topic. One of the things that uh, Uzbekistan has reached potential, along with uh, food and beverage, culinary tourism, as you can see from my uh, size of my belly, I put it on uh, plow and uh, beshparmak. There are so many riches of Uzbekistan. I am not here to uh, talk about them one by one, but I had um, what we are seeing here. Uh, after the, the change in the administration in 2016, as you can see, there is a dramatic increase in the number of the tourists, uh, international tourists visiting Uzbekistan. Even COVID couldn't stop it. In the it is coming back uh, stronger than ever. The numbers are catching up with 2017 numbers already. Oh, sorry. Now, um, from very brief but uh, every management requires understanding happening. So uh, realistically, yes, there are, um, there are some strains, uh, proven track of domestic tourism, very unlikely uh, to majority of the countries. There is a strong domestic tourism. Regional tourism is growing uh, ever um, since. Diverse tourism product, as we uh, briefly mentioned, and it goes to untouched and unspoiled, as uh, my previous uh, colleagues mentioned earlier. However, it's not perfect. There are lack of uh, things, infrastructure, lack of education. Only nine by the time that I present this uh, PowerPoint. I'm sure there are more uh, programs popping up every day. 
a program focusing on only dedicated to tourism and hospitality education in uh, such a huge country with this uh, population of youngsters. There is a uh, gap there. However, there are opportunities, lots of investment. Uh, there are um, bodies granting uh, projects like uh, Asia Development Bank, European Union, and smaller, uh, similar bodies. We have to be careful about, um, you know, uh, not spoiling the environment. It needs to be sustainable. What uh, Cyprus and other countries that uh, have done, uh, we shouldn't be, you know, uh, recklessly using the resources, then going back and trying to fix them. So, moving on. This is very important. I, I, the reason I'm mentioning this, it will be hopefully a basis of discussion in 2019. We set ambitious goals for 2025, uh, around 20 million foreign tourists and more than 3,000 uh, accommodation facilities and rooms and tour operators, which is much needed in ever developing countries. So, uh, to end the, the introduction by, with the State Tourism Development Committee's uh, decision, uh, statement that travel and tourism industry is one of the best industry sectors for the country. Now, uh, where we are right now, very briefly, we were talking about uh, the need, uh, there's a gap, need for hospitality and tourism industry and the country need. We did some kind of um, industry search. We met with the uh, hoteliers uh, and other stakeholders uh, from Visit Uzbekistan, from the ministry, uh, from the travel uh, agencies, and we asked them, what do you need? So, uh, in summary, they mentioned that there are communication skills needed, uh, being multilingual, uh, confident, and both the written and oral communication is important. This is what the industry mentioned. Technical skills, F&B preparation, rooms division and reservation, these are the things that uh, hoteliers in their needs. And soft skills are surprisingly one of the top highlighted uh, issues. Guest relations, human behavior and performance skills, these are the, um, the untold best of my uh, knowledge that we teach, we teach accounting, we teach marketing, but uh, we don't teach multitasking skills per se. There is no course, again, to the best of my knowledge. Um, so this is continuation of having the representatives of industry and uh, academia here, hopefully uh, will help us um, on the path to develop our uh, program, we uh, benchmark uh, top-ranked universities, what they are doing, and we decided to work with American Hotel Lodging and Educational Institute, one of the, the largest, the highlighted ones. They are uh, directly courses from AHLA injected in our curriculum. So by the end of four years, the students will both take courses from uh, Team University and uh, AHLA, and they will get an associate degree and an Uzbek bachelor's degree. So a double degree at the end of uh, the program. So um, I'm just gonna stop uh, here. This is uh, sounding like uh, I'm promoting the university, but to create the flat platform of discussing what we should be teaching uh, from the industry po education point of view and what industry needs, this is it, okay. I will stop here. Now, um, please uh, join me uh, to first introduce yourself and then very briefly talk about what you do and what do you think uh, the tourism in uh, Uzbekistan went through and is going through for now. All right. Dr. Akmal, would you like to start from the line? Thank you so much. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Akmal John. I am from Silk Road International University of Tourism and Cultural Heritage, uh, which is located uh, uh, not far from here, just a five minutes walk. Uh, I'm a head of the Department of Tourism Management. 
Uh, I studied uh, in UK and recently I completed my uh, research work in Columbia University in the US. Uh, so in terms of uh, tourism and it, uh, education, so what one another can give to each other. So there is a, uh, so many uh, and so many beliefs, so the tourism and education can uh, which the world need to uh, address. Uh, when we talk about the world, so we need to talk about our country, uh, Central Asia. Uh, as for Uzbekistan, uh, we know that the tourism sector, tourism industry is leading economic uh, sector of the country. The government is paying attention to this sector uh, as a, a leading uh, the country to the next level, uh, which gives uh, jobs uh, for people, uh, creates uh, economic power to government uh, with economy uh, with uh, finance and economic indicators. So, as a university, Silk Road uh, University, so we are students for the industry. Uh, I would like to tell one fact that uh, the newly built uh, touristic center in uh, in Samarkand, uh, the, the workers of that center, the most of them are our students. And we heard that uh, from the managers and uh, from guests who are visiting Samarkand, our students have the, the right knowledge, uh, right experience, but there is some gap uh, which we need to work on that. So that uh, that gap is the practical. So with education in the university, so we are improving, which uh, with, uh, we aim uh, to, uh, to, to address those issues with uh, practical needs for our, uh, for our students. Uh, uh, for now, uh, for the moment, so we have uh, the the measure in a hotel, uh, hotel restaurant logistics uh, and uh, international uh, hospitality uh, development in our de uh, in our within our department uh, we have uh, students we have a uh, lectures uh, lectures are coming from uh, different countries uh, like Australia Turkey US, uh, Japan uh, Iran and. Italy and uh, from other countries. Uh, what we are the best uh, knowledge, uh, which we can, which they can use it uh, in their uh, in their uh, future in, when they work for the industry. So I hope uh, this event will help uh, to to know. Uh, the industry side and educational side and exchange the views, find out the gap uh, which we need to address uh, directly uh, with, uh, with communication, uh, with, the, uh, with uh, one to another. Uh, I think it's enough. Uh, Dr. Akmal is very excited. I, I really uh, admire this. But what do you think yeah. the, the state of uh, Uzbek tourism now? Then once everyone uh, finishes question, then we will say that, okay, so what do they need from us and what we want from the industry? So what do you think uh, tourism industry is? How is it going to be? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. The, I think uh, the Uzbek, uh, Uzbekistan is doing uh, quite good, but it is not enough. So we need to work on that. As I told you, so that, that from tourism, so we can create uh, jobs for people, we can uh, create new uh, activities for tourists, but uh, we don't have here yet, so we need to develop it. So how are we gonna develop it? Uh, through knowing the facts, what we are missing here in country, in country country in Pakistan and other locations. So uh, uh, as a university, so we need to uh, give the idea to our uh, students. So what we are missing and 
uh, we need to give them uh, the the right information. So what we need we can do to uh, to address uh, to meet these uh, problems to solve. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, hello to everyone. My name is Sanjar, and I work in a people travel inbound company. It's an ordinary uh, inbound travel company with all the outcomes of uh, boring and not boring uh, touristic life. So, in my opinion, Uzbekistan has went already through a way of development in tourism, and uh, still a lot what we have to go through. If it comes in terms of education, if it comes in terms of academics, many. Um, uh, Many topics and many things which are being taught at the university are quite useful. But as you've mentioned already, uh, the main thing is for me at the moment is soft skills from one side, which is not being taught at the universities as far as I know. I'm not very familiar with the curriculum of the universities, unfortunately. From another side is the motivation. We've got a lot of universities who do have the tourism faculties, but we have so few of them who are after the graduation go really and work in the travel industry. That's, I can say it from my side, uh, I'm not really conducting that, but I can say it from my side, which I have faced already. I've seen a lot of students who've been graduated from the universities and then they have lost this will or interest or passion in the tourism after the graduation. They, see, they don't see themselves in the university. This is one of the things. So I think university should do uh, something on the motivating people, stu uh, students, uh, after the graduation going into the travel field, the tourism field and tourism industry and try to work there as well. This is from one, one side. It comes into the syllabus and the curriculum of the universities. I think I've seen some of the curriculums of, the, of some of the universities and I've compared them with, the, let's say, for example, uh, Swiss uh, tourism universities. If we say the most known and most advanced tourism universities in the world, if they do the accent on the IT, I haven't seen any IT uh, directions, uh, any IT um, specialized in tourism in our universities at the moment. This is my thought. Oh, this, this is very interesting. Thank you very much. About the uh, Uzbek uh, <laughs> tourism, but uh, Valuable feedback. I uh, am noting mentally that motivation and curriculum points are very important. So, uh, Dr. Indra, what do you think? Uh, uh, how we can keep our students motivated and stay in the industry? What MDIS is doing? Um, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for inviting. My name is, I am a leading lecturer in uh, Management Development Institute. Singapore in Tashkent. Um, I teach uh, tourism and hospitality related subjects and um, talking about, if you let me uh, talk about the tourism industry first, because I had an experience working in the industry before and uh, now I, I see it from a different perspective uh, because also I have a chance to and uh, you know, take the best uh, practices of uh, tourism, how to facilitate, how to ease, how to make this industry more comfortable and interesting for the travelers. And um, there is still yet a very big potential of tourism in Uzbekistan. The only issue that I see is uh, we still, from year to year, we are still practicing same um, same tourism uh, approach, I would say, um, from the government side. If it comes to the education, um, you mentioned that uh, many tourists lost their interest uh, working in students, yes, uh, um, lost, lose their interest uh, working in the industry. And let me tell you, they lose their interest already while studying it. Yes, um, but uh, so my observation is that uh, students also 
something out of the box. They still see the tourism industry as a service industry, which is true, but uh, they are already afraid of uh, starting work as a waiter, for instance, or working in a reception. Nowadays, uh, youth is very ambitious, which is very great, I believe. Um, but um, I'm in during my classes, I'm trying to transfer the idea that tourism is not only serving. It's not only being a waiter or working in a hotel. Uh, there is much more opportunities in this uh, sector as an industry, which is really, really huge. And uh, you can take uh, food and beverage, you can take a uh, government sector uh, of tourism side, you can uh, choose hospitality or travel industry, right? And you can be both a service provider or product provider. It can be many things, but uh, despite the fact that uh, the, the materials that we provide have, they, lot, they bring up lots of uh, different examples and practices, uh, students cannot think out of the box. And they mostly compare it to the level of the pay, like how much uh, students are getting paid. And of course, nowadays, uh, there are more um, uh, exposed information and like uh, people are earning, they also compare each other with uh, with same generations in different countries and stuff. But uh, this, uh, this is like, uh, this, they find it as a disadvantage in the tourism industry that they get paid very low salaries, but they also do not understand that this is just the beginning of their path. And um, I think this gap between um, their um, perception and the real practices, um, that's, that's the gap between. Um, All right, thank you very much, Dr. Um, just before we uh, uh, move to the next speaker, I think uh, as educators, we need to uh, take some responsibility. Yes, uh, the student attention span is getting shorter and shorter, like the video, social media getting shorter and shorter, which is an indirect reflection of uh, the youth's uh, fun of However, um, I, I would like to uh, put us as educators, we have to be more creative, find ways to make A, uh, the courses more interesting. Uh, I was, as a dean, I don't have to teach, but I, for the method, I am taking uh, courses that I am passionate about and I am trying to find ways to make it more fun. Of course, uh, I'm sure everyone in this panel and, and there, we are doing our best to do that. Uh, but yes, there is a change in the demographic in the way of uh, people learning. We have to adapt to that. I, I give it to you definitely. And motivation side, um, when I was teaching in Saudi Arabia, one of uh, my, my colleagues uh, was teaching housekeeping operations and they had a mock-up uh, guest room. He made the bed, students are watching, and when he unmade and said, okay, Mohammed, please do it. And he said, no, I, I don't want to do it. And uh, my friend asked, why? Said, why hire a Filipino or someone else to do it? So uh, I think this uh, serving, avoiding the serving mentality we have to change as educators. You cannot be a manager, you cannot be a supervisor if you don't know how to make that bloody bad. How can you tell people, hey, this is not right, if you don't do it yourself. So with that, please uh, introduce yourself. And, uh, Hello, my name is Ibor. I'm from um, Hotel Association of Uzbekistan. So um, in our practice, I'm from the, um, this part of the world, uh, who's given the job, right? And uh, we are as a society uh, in uh, cooperation with the uh, uh, Switzerland project here, uh, Havatis uh, recently um, made some research uh, with the hoteliers. Uh, and uh, what I 
we ask them, uh, do you know what uh, your potential um, employer study at university or in the college or in the, in the school? They don't know. Uh, do you participate in examination? Do you in contact with the um, um, junior? People ask, answer no, we, we don't. So they don't know um, what they study, but after that, uh, they also give the mark um, what the, uh, how you, um, what point you give your uh, employers, new employers. So it's uh, average rate was three. know what they study they don't they don't communicate the um practices. so what we understand there is no connection and uh, now we are in preparation with this project they just um enter to the country they're gonna um they're gonna do the project they're gonna um do this uh, switzerland uh, um, Uh, education system, yeah, it's a uh, dual, uh, dual, yeah, so it's a 70% and 30% um, educated. So there's that's the point. Uh, also, uh, what we understand that um, students who just um, just start study Silk Road or whenever, so they are motivated. Uh, because they don't know why they studying there, so there is no any prof orientation in the school time, school period. So point why they are not motivated because they are not um, gonna work in their you know future life. Yeah, that one what we understand with our research, and uh, so um, now we are in this project. And I'm going to go in this uh, system. Thank you very much. Definitely lots of things unpacked there. I'm very happy as someone who, you know, um, who are who is familiar with the uh, education system. I am certified from Ecole Hotelier de Lausanne. I know how uh, how good they are. So I'm very happy that they are entering and working with the Uzbek government. Um, I think uh, what we are saying is, uh, we are always saying that, okay, industry doesn't want to, you know, uh, talk with us, but maybe we can approach them yet. Because it takes, uh, not simply close our eyes and ears and say, okay, this is what we think we should be teaching. And at the same time, industry, if, my humble opinion, please, uh, you know, at the end, uh, share your opinion as well. Uh, industry, if they want uh, the graduates to their liking, to their fit, they have to be more vocal. This is what I understand as someone representing the hoteliers. You are saying that sadly your members are stating that they are not talking with. And actually, when they graduate the university, I'm as a hotelier. So these new people come to work. and we ask the department so they don't want they all of them are managers. So that's the point. That that's what you said. If you don't know how this department works, so you cannot continue. This you know, this knowledge is gonna be gap. So that's the uh, and actually uh, for the um, university, if uh, these students are gonna work from the beginning and have this experience, so after the, they graduate, so they're you know they're ready you know, to be a supervisor. Thank you. Um, I think we have another industry representative. What can you add? What we are missing? <clears throat> Something I can add. <laughs> My name is Christina Smarodina, working in uh, tourism 13 years, so like nine years like a tour operator, but I'm still a tour operator. 
in four years I'm working with the hotels, different types of the hotels. My uh, work uh, is uh, I'm checking the hotel, like a hotel auditor. So hotels can ask me to come and uh, to help them to find out what problems do they have of uh, their departments. Like uh, I'm starting to check everything. So about the room, everything, how the staff works. Um, so I can say that uh, opinions are both sides, like a tour operator and a hotelier. So the question is, first of all, uh, for example, when I started to work in tourism sphere, I didn't think about salary. The one of the main problems which we have now, those who are coming to work anyway, later or they're coming to work in a hotel, they first of all think, uh, uh, think and ask for a salary. So they do not come to uh, provide anything. They come to take something. So first of all, please show what can you do. Uh, what salary I can give you for or what uh, experience I can give you this salary. This is the one of the main points. Uh, another, yes, we have a big problem with the education system in this sphere. For the last years, we have now universities, different colleges. Uh, before, when uh, students came to us for practice, when I worked in a uh, travel agency, they didn't even know from which destination to go. Uh, for example, I'm asking how can you get to Samarkand? Is they don't even know from which side is uh, Samarkand, how they can get to the Samarkand. To Samarkand. Uh, nowadays, more and more education system improves. So now at least they know about this and the geography is done. That's good. The first problem is the salary, I guess so. Because anyway, no, no one works for just for free. They want to have a good salary. And another question is the hotel, what salary they can provide and for, for which uh, service. Uh, this is, uh, I think, maybe a big problem because <laughs> everyone knows uh, not all hotels wants to, be, to give a good salary. That's why, uh, People, when they come to work, they do not have this uh, uh, motivation to work and to improve their skills, improve uh, their uh, service, to be the best uh, staff, uh, yes, uh, to be the best among all of them. All of them. So it, no matter small hotel, big hotel, this problem is everywhere. Thank you very much. These are I think uh, as hoteliers, there's something that, you know, uh, we can work from both sides, education and industry. Thank you very much. It's very valuable. Please. Thank you. My name is Rafshan Turakulov. I represent Pro Destinations, destination management company in Samarkand. Uh, I can just share my uh, experience in my agency. Uh, to uh, 24 people in our office. And uh, during the year, uh, there is uh, around 30, 40 person coming to our office and try to work with us and uh, half of them uh, going away. Not really because of salary. The problem is that uh, when uh, young people come to in our office, we spend another four or five months to train them, to retrain them. And uh, it costs a really high price. Then uh, another point is that uh, a student, when they are uh, sitting the whole academic year in university, in the auditorium, then when he comes to travel agency, usually they're not ready to work immediately. And in Samarkand, uh, in Samarkand students, they have very less time to practice their profession during their uh, academic year. And it's a very big problem. Uh, I think that uh, usually we hire students, uh, we hire people uh, from this institute, Institute of Foreign Languages, and now we started to hire from Silk Road University. But in both cases, people come and we retrain them during four or five months. Uh, 
I think that uh, this uh, education system is different in Samarkand universities and in Tashkent. We, we like to be like in Tashkent, but uh, still we retrain the people here. And uh, another point, I think that uh, in universities, you uh, to people possibility to learn uh, uh, Western style of working in tourism. But tourism in Uzbekistan is very different than in Western countries. And they study different things and they are obliged to work different things in the office. And uh, when people come with different uh, knowledge, we always should. This is the main problem. Oh, thank you very much. Now, this is an eye opener as an educator. Uh, definitely, the, the program should be tailor made to the needs of the country, the culture. In book written by an American kilometer away will not fit the realities of it. Definitely. So uh, just to elaborate your, your comment, uh, you are saying that you are retraining in the sense that like skill-based courses like we are teaching Fidelio in this way or Galileo in this way and it's not correct or are we teaching the wrong thing? When I say we like as academia, are we missing out something that you need in your operations that we should include our uh, curriculum or uh, we are doing it wrong like we are teaching maybe the wrong material wrong uh, software than you are uh, what you are using for me it's difficult to say something about the materials they have uh, during their student time but uh, i think that uh, usually we we train them uh, operational skills and uh, in universities they have no this uh, they have no possibility to have these operational skills people come to office uh, usually they are in uh, they did their uh, university very well but uh, when he's in a travel agency when he should work he lost usually they lost and we spent our time to retrain Dr. Vindra is getting uh, ready to answer so, as the representative of universities, uh, I'm not here to defend all universities. What is MDIS and CIPROD International University doing uh, to, to, to provide uh, practical skills, practical uh, knowledge? So, um, I want to mention one thing. So, when I start uh, with the year one students, um, after foundation, you choose uh, to faculty. I first ask what brought them there, like what did they think of the tourism faculty is um, and uh, what are their expectations. And I write on the board one by one everybody's answer. And the winner among answers is to travel. And I try to explain them that there are much more different ways to travel if it, if it is their main aim. Because, uh, as I mentioned, tourism and hospitality is much more than that. So I think, and it's okay, I remember, recall myself, uh, international relations and regretting it when I was uh, in my graduation year, what, uh, what I'm doing in politics. And I think that's the uh, normal process of uh, learning and discovering what you, what, or what students like. Um, the other thing is like to, to cope with these expectations um, um, from the industry. And um, I think when they go to travel agencies, they think they will be already given opportunities to travel, you know, initiatives uh, to work with the tourists. Because I find people like introverts. Uh, they don't really uh, go into this industry. So, uh, in terms of practices, answering to your question, we have um, tourism work placement uh, subjects for year two students. And they, they do ask for more opportunities to practice. We also have 
tourism lab where we have a mock-up rooms uh, with uh, like uh, housekeeping, reception, food and beverage sector. And um, here, another, we can, I, I, I realize that there is another gap that uh, probably universities do not cooperate with the sectors like service provider sectors enough to get uh, uh, practicing, practicing opportunities for each student. Uh, what happens usually is that they give opportunity to students to find a practice place first, and if they cannot manage it, then universities help. I think that's the big issue because not all students, because they don't know the industry yet well enough, and they cannot push themselves to go this not paid because it's in an or you know, below their uh, ego, say. So I think there should be some uh, government supporting program uh, that cooperates with universities or uh, uh, encourages uh, industries like hospitality sector, tourism sector, food and beverage sector to get interns to teach them the further opportunity to give them a job uh, opportunity or to stay or stay there until they graduate and become, you know, better specialists by the time they graduate. And um, I, I believe also it will increase a great um, um, self um, uh, self awareness and also um, confidence. Yes, thank you um, to to move further in as a, in, in their career. Just Thank one you. thing that uh, from what Dr. Indra said, why we are not uh, getting industry members to teach in our university? Because we are just uh, talking about, yes, uh, we need to ask you. And we are, to the best of our ability, we are ask, uh, asking the industry, like, what do you need? And as I very briefly show, while we are launching this program, we, we met the hoteliers, travel agents, etc., the government, and ask them what do you need, and we collect yeah. those skills. But like a professor of twenty something years, never worked in a hotel, teaching this. Whatever the the course is right, but maybe the the lecturer is wrong. This so maybe another thing that we can collaborate more. We have to bring you, ladies and gentlemen, very good classroom, idea. Yeah. Uh, to teach. Very good idea, invite industry to teach your students. And uh, another side of this uh, point, send students to the industry to have more time to practice. Practice is a key point to have a uh, good, uh, good person in your office. Then, then uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I very, very much like it, uh, Dr. Erdogan, that uh, this point that, for example, this Silk Road University they should work personal for Samarkand service industry, not for uh, for Russia, not for Kazakhstan, not for United States, but but targeted for Samarkand. And uh, in this case, I think it will be the best way. Well, you mentioned about Samarkand University, Doctor Akmal, just to respond to that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as a representative. Representative of the University of Silk Road, uh, I would like to uh, thank for your comments, and I would like to take it into consideration. So, for the new coming academic year, uh, we work on our curriculum. Uh, we have started developing it, and uh, and I can invite you uh, be part of this uh, the project, the program. So you can share your ideas with us. So we're gonna put uh, uh, your your actions and your words into you know just into our program. Not only bring him to teach in your classes. Yes, definitely. No, no, I'm going to say about this. Yeah, uh, very great. So if you can come to our university and teach some course, we have yeah. yes, yes. <laughs> we have a special course called travel service management, uh, which uh, gives the 
the, the information about how to create uh, the tourism agencies and how to run that agency and the operational ma management courses we have and hotel management courses. So that would be great. So if you can, uh, all of you from industry can come and share your idea. So the one thing, so the, in general, so I would like there is a mismanagement in the government level and the, uh, in the university level. So we have, we are facing not only one person can change that. So we need to be, uh, we need to be, uh, we need to gather together and we need to raise our voice about those issues. So uh, we are facing, we are feeling, so the, the industry is missing. So that would be so, uh, the solution. That's, that's the right thing Akmal John just Thank mentioned. You. That's what I wanted to comment about, that uh, in my opinion, this is not only the, about the education, academical and the private sector, this is about the law as well. So, uh, they teach for a guy for four years. We know that in Uzbekistan, many students go to the university just to get the diploma, not because of the, not because of the profession, just to get the diploma. And uh, most of them go also maybe for the tourism, knowing that the tourism at the moment is a quite popular destination and everybody's speaking about the uh, mission of academics, knowledge, and the mission of the private sector is to give the motivation after the academics. So in that case, here should come the government and change the law. Just an example, in my opinion, you can be, become a guide for years getting your bachelor's degree in two years. You don't need to study for four years. You can get it in two years. You can become a tour operator, for example, in two years as well. There is no need to spend four years to get it, to, to become a tour operator. And in these cases also, as Ravshanaka said, we have to do uh, uh, intersections in, in two industries. So if the academics does the, open, the days of open doors when where the travel sector can come and present them their companies and their destinations for example what they do so tourism is not only about the inbound or not only about outbound yeah we've got a lot of other types of tourism where people or students from rural areas will uh, study and maybe they will get some new ideas when they will go back home especially taking into account our deep traditions where for example he studied at the city then he has to go back home maybe he will bring some new ideas how to develop his rural area or uh, how to bring some something new in his village for example right so we in all together in in order to change something and for sure in this case we may succeed thank you very much I, I i definitely agree your last comment but uh, can i go back to your earlier comment about the the, the four-year versus two-year program as someone uh, in cyprus i a diploma, two-year diploma, plus they asked me, do you want to continue? I said, yes, and I studied two more years and I got a four-year bachelor degree in my hand. When we were designing this uh, program, I said, why don't we have a, an associate degree, like label it, or a Turkish people la a label it diploma, and offer that to, to people who want to go back to industry as quick as possible, as uh, mentioned by the panelists, you don't need to know strategic marketing management to work in a hotel. I'm not saying that it's not needed, but the management side is not needed to be in the, in the, in the kitchen or in the service component. But uh, my Uzbek colleagues strongly uh, got against this idea, they reject this idea, and they said no. No Uzbek, no parents want to uh, take a two-year diploma serious uh, unless it is four years. They, they, the, the parents of 16, 17, 18 years old kids, they say no, they don't want their uh, daughters and sons to study uh, skill-based courses because they don't study. So my question is to panel first, uh, uh, to audience, why why this is the case? Like, why do you think that anything less than four years? Again, I'm not saying you might say no. I don't think that way. But why this is the case that there's a general perception of inferiority of two years skill-based courses uh, against the evidence that industry is growing rapidly. Not all the jobs need four years. 
because if they start today, four years later, they will be out in the market. So what do you think as a bank, uh, as a, a, a ignorant foreigner, I really like to hear your opinion. Why do you, uh, what do you think about two-year program? Uh, can I say um, this? Um, I think uh, as now we are teaching, uh, preparing students for the industry, but also government and education-wise, we're also learning how to teach. I think eventually the education system of Uzbekistan will get to the point where we're trying and um, agree that associate programs actually is a very good thing and also it it's very quick um, um, specialists uh, to to fill the gap that is very big right now and uh, i think the, or there should be some uh, scientific not scientific but uh, uh, researchers like research programs that actually prove that there is a need uh, maybe uh, the the government uh, side does not see that gap as um, uh, they just want uh, four-year students to fill this gap, right? But uh, if we prove uh, how much fast uh, we can get rid of these uh, uh, issues, I think uh, they will be more um, supportive in this case uh, for this uh, two two years program. Uh, another idea is, if, for example, um, people won't accept two-year education. There is another way. You study for two years, then you go to practice for two years. For example, right? And not, uh, for, uh, I can go for it. This is, I don't think that that would be a problem, and uh, 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 the students should go for that as well, that he got his two years of academics and then he got his two years of the practice and he will he can become a better professional in this field yeah and another thing is as indira said i totally agree that we can really fill in the gap after the practice of two years we already can know that uh, if this person is motivated to stay in the tourism field or not if he is motivated he can go and study another for example years, and he can get his for example higher degree master degree or whatever I think a uh, signal by the, by the level of time that we are running out of time. Uh, I would like uh, to uh, remain here during the break. If you have some questions, some comments, we can discuss. But it wouldn't be fair for our audience if they had some brief uh, questions for us, for any panelists. But please feel free. Next Hi. Um, so, just would like to, um, you know, make some comments on basically the whole discussion. Just, just, I'm a recent graduate from the from the universities, and I had this opportunity to study both in, you know, CIS country, which is Russia, and in Europe. So I had a different perspective on it. So, just the problems that basically uh, students face when they, uh, you know, pre their studies or during their studies and after this. So I just would like to start with. Um, how, how people actually, you know, enter uh, tourism or hospitality universities or, um, you know, this uh, direction of um, education, I would say. So first of all, as you, as someone of you pointed out, that basically um, our people just want to get the diploma, right? So just they don't care about what this um, education will be. And tourism and hospitality is in maybe in a worse, uh, not, yeah, um, uh, place here because normally people would start thinking about Okay, I gotta get the diploma, but it should be a prestigious one, let's say. So maybe first I would um, I would um, consider like sociology or something like this, and then if I don't, for example, um, enter that university, the tur tourism or hospitality will be my third option, fourth option, whatever I want to uh, enter. But that's that that's really true. I I know a lot of these kind of stories actually. Similarly, when we uh, as students enter the university, then we really don't don't know about opportunities which which are there. So, for example, what be, what do we really uh, know about tourism and hospitality? What what uh, what kind of communities are there? So, for example, 
waiters, front office managers at the hotel, uh, tour agents, and basically that's it. There is so much in tourism that someone else, um, so, so much more in tourism that, uh, than these kind of jobs, at least. And people don't have uh, enough uh, information or they don't know about uh, these kind of opportunities. There's, this, there's destination management, there's all these uh, private sector companies, and everything. Yeah. So then the courses. Uh, for example, um, in the uh, European uh, education system, there is uh, a lot of things um, that are um, based on practice and uh, case studies. So, for example, uh, one guy, one hotel manager came to us uh, and asked to um, uh, propose some um, rooftop restaurant concepts. And we had to um, divide ourselves into groups and work on it for a full semester, basically, which was really cool. We obtained a lot of um, skills in that way. And then, uh, if we when there uh, when we finish courses, there are no internship opportunities, as as you uh, every, everybody. Uh, and then when we graduate from the university, so we just look, start looking for jobs, and so uh, expectations of employers are so high. It's it, it's actually it's really crazy because for this amount of money, uh, hoteliers or whatever, they are looking for this amount of skills and experience and knowledge and everything. So you just look at this. You know, job hunting uh, websites, and you can just cannot see where you can fit in with where if you're recently graduated. So yeah, that's that would be me. Thank you. Actually, we as hoteliers ready to educate. We don't accept so high. Uh, so uh, just <laughs> my yeah, my question is more practical. Uh, yeah, you see, I run a small hotel. The biggest problem is to find the employees of the lowest level. Housekeeping, and, uh, you know, you, all your universities and uh, or institutes of tourism, whenever you open up and uh, you train someone, every student there wants to be a boss. Nobody wants to do that job. What do we do with the rest? I mean, I cannot find the proper employee for years already. You know, they keep on changing like socks. Somebody comes, works for a month or two, and he leaves. So he's not. Uh, how do you, he, he, he doesn't have any skills and uh, we even teach these uh, uh, ladies, girls with the diploma from some professional tourism college or whatever and, uh, they work for some time and they live, we pay them well but they are they have zero professional zero knowledge why don't we start from colleges of the lowest level instead of opening these tourism universities or whatever. So let's start from that level. I think that's a very good point. Thank you very much. Now, uh, two last questions very briefly. I think you're right. there are some typical food. Uh, it's like uh, the name here is Colin. Colin. Uh, I think uh, on the on, on that with the new uh, minister hopefully to train them as universities we can support them so that it can be a nice uh, thing so last two questions anyone who would like to ask questions no okay so if i may have like two minutes in one minute what is uh, that we have to take from uh, today uh, from your point of view one minute <laughs> Very short. Uh, invite, going to kill me. <laughs> invite uh, industry persons to the universities and send students for more time to practice to industry. Okay. That's, thank you very much. Uh, I would add the same, practice, practice, and practice, because the reason sphere is a, a, sign, a such kind of sphere where you have to practice a lot. So you have to taste what you are selling. It, uh, no matter you are a tour operator which is selling the whole country or you are a hotelier which is selling your hotel, you always have to practice. You have to check your rooms in your rooms when you want to sell them. The same if you want to be a tour operator, you have to uh, travel the amount, um, around the whole country if you want to, to travel. The practice is the main. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> my two kind of uh, announcement. Um, we as a hoteliers are going to be uh, going to hold a hotel business forum the next month, uh, second and third of uh, March, in Hayat. 
and we're going to do um, Uzbekistan Hotel Award. And you, are you going to invite us? Yes, I, I'm inviting you, all of you. You just go to the website, register over there, and that's it. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I think uh, here um, we have three sides, a private sector, tourism and hospitality industry, education. And without the help of the third party, which is government, um, these two sectors cannot actually, uh, you know, uh, be, 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 uh, far, yeah, be per effective uh, in that sense. So I think it has to go through the, like, with, the, with the, some researches and proof that we need the help of the government to put these two sides together. And that uh, he has to, uh, the, 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 that government sector should pull both sides' strengths to connect and work towards the uh, aims of uh, tourism. The inner researcher uh, here screams, yes, let's do more research, but uh, it needs to turn into uh, application. Yeah, but I also have a comment about the hospitality sector people. It's just uh, there is, I, I find out that my observation that there is a particular type of people who are, who are just bored to, to work in this industry. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, change of legislation, change of curriculum, and collaboration of all the sites of the industry. Thank you. Uh, from this forum, from our discussion, I found out there are experts in the, from tourism industry, uh, such as uh, we have him now, so you can join to our group to develop our uh, new curriculum for the new academic. Is, yeah, for all of them, yeah, that's, uh, that's I said uh, about the uh, uh, Russian idea. So all of you can join us, please, and help us to develop our curriculum, which helps to develop our tourism industry here in Uzbekistan. Thank you so much. Well, thanks for the invitation. Uh, it's my uh, humble uh, opinion that we there are some things discussed here that I haven't heard uh, being discussed. Uh, I think that we just scratched the surface. Discussed lots to be uh, collaborated uh, with the government and education sector. But I would like to thank uh, my fellow panelists and the audience. I know afternoon the room is warm, and I am very appreciative you sticking and you know supporting us. Thank you very much.